I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. All right, y'all, we're back for another episode of the I Love Myself podcast. We have an extremely special guest. This man has made his rounds. You've seen him go viral a few times. Bro, here on the I Love Myself podcast, we have a rule. Mm. When you come on a podcast, you got to say three reasons why you love yourself. Three reasons why I love myself. And you know what's crazy? That's actually a hard question sometimes for a lot of people. Mm. I say um, I love myself because I typically, more, more times than not, I'll choose to do what's right and not what's easy. Mm. Um, I love myself because I have the ability to change people's lives and I use that gift to mm. do that. Whether it's through my words, through my music, uh, just the people I meet, you know. I love myself because I'm a protector. Mm. Naturally. Anytime we go out back in the day, like, if you were my, my friends, my brother, whoever it was, if they were with me, I'm like, hey, where they at? All right, they're right there. Okay, wow. cool. Go back to doing what I'm doing. Every couple of seconds, look back again. Oh, they still good? Okay, cool. Wow. And now having kids, it's like the same thing. You'll notice me at a party like, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> one, because I got, you know, I got so many. You got to count them out. Like, okay, that's how many of mine are there. Wow. So those are the three reasons why I love myself. So I'll top my head. I didn't think of it beforehand. So I hope it, I hope it was good. No, that's good. That's <laughs> yeah. good. So for those of us who don't know who Jesse is, who's Jesse? Where are you from? Uh, originally, I grew up in a city called La Puente in California. So most people, you know, when you're from California, they say, oh, you're from L.A. I'm not from L.A., I'm from La Puente. That's, that's just a little city. Uh, that's where I grew up. Uh, I was uh, raised right there. I had both my grandma's houses, man, four houses down from each other, the same street. Mm. So I could see them from the front yard. That's uh, that's where I grew up. And you know how it is back in the day. I was with my grandma. I just had a lot of freedom. So I was mostly with my friends in the streets where there wasn't a cell phone, so... Once you took off, you were just in the abyss. You just showed up again so at some point in time, you know? Nobody knew where you were once you left the house. So what was life like growing up there? Ah, oh, man. It was uh, it was hard, but it was a blessing. When I, when you look back, obviously when you're going through it, you don't think that it's it's going to work to your favor. But now when I look back, like, wow, I, I'm generous. I'll, I'll share you with you my last spoonful of, okay, cool, let me split that up in half, bro, if you're mm. hungry. We could split that to the end, and that's from growing up, you know, not having much. Uh, me and my friends, we go. Um, I have a story in one of my songs where I say there was uh, growing up four kids and one bowl of top ramen, because we'd go and whether we were stealing food or putting our food together, we put together a big old bowl of top ramen, and it'd be like me and my friends on the block, just going to town on it, sharing mm. like that to the end. Wow, wow. Um, we had this this snack, man. I think about we called it a uh, chili ice, and. <laughs> It's literally ice cubes with tapatio, lemon, and salt. And that was just to keep something in our stomach, just to, wow, just to taste something. Wow, wow. And then we have a game at the end, like, all right, who can, t- who can down the chili? Because it was, it was harsh by that time. You know, it, was, it was harsh. So we'd be like, who can down this by the end? So I think all of those things, man, just really taught me to appreciate people mm. and just, you know, working together through things. And sometimes when you go through things, people let it define them. Word. Word. Now it's like it defines me in, in a proper way. It, it helped mold me. It ain't all, oh man, you see Jesse liked ah, but it's because this Jesse did this and he had to deal with that. Nah, you wouldn't believe what I, what the things I've been through in a sense. Mm. When you hear my story, like oh damn, man, you're still you're still that good of a person. Yeah, I still am. Or yeah. what are some things you went through that most people would have went through and they would have let it define them? Man, uh, just growing up poor. Period. Right? Like yeah, you uh, you, you really. Like, you really painted a picture. Y'all were eating ice cubes to keep your stomach full. <laughs> yeah, so growing up when you have a uh, hand-me-down clothes or you're getting clothes from the swap meet, your shoes, are, you know your shoes are cheap. You, you, There's no, in my mind, I knew I knew what they were. So you have people who clown on you because you don't got what they got. You know, I don't look as, as put together as you may look. I don't got my hair cut or nothing like that. I'll be cutting it myself as, uh, as I was growing up. So my self-esteem was low, bro. Mm. I mean, low. I had girls that liked me because my voice got deep and and only liked me because of my voice. Wow. Like, there was wow. nothing like, oh, well, you're cute and everything, but, you know, you don't got what this, you don't got what they have here. You don't got that. So. So would you say poverty affects male self-esteem? Oh, it definitely does. Wow. The way that they look at us, that we're supposed to be providers. We're supposed to have these things. And if we don't, we're, we're no good. When you don't realize that that person may have came from the dirt. Mm. So, like. 
you know, you got to build with them. You got to start stacking. You can't just come up. And I feel like the people who come up and have things are the people who have a lot of, as their children do not have the same drive as those that, of or, us that I came agree. up without. I agree. So then that's the concern I have with my kids is that trying to find that middle ground. Like, obviously, I don't want my kids to struggle, or, <laughs> but I need them to understand <laughs> struggle. Ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need them to understand struggle so that they have that drive still. Mm. But it, it's something that's very hard to, how would you say it? How to say it? Put it in them unnaturally because it's not a natural occurrence to them. I'm, mm. I'm trying to feed it to them, and it's going to be very difficult. That's the, the path I'm on right now, trying to make sure they understand struggle so they have drive without having to go through a struggle, mm. in a sense. So you spoke about self-esteem. You, you battled with low self-esteem. When did you overcome that, and how did you overcome that? Man, I don't know. Did I you re- overcome it, I should ask first. I mean, I'm humble, so I don't really be like, I'm this and I'm that, but I don't think I don't think little of myself at all. Mm. Um, I, I won't, especially after, you know, when you started saying that I love myself, and I really it really hit me, because... When I went to the LA event, you said, repeat after me. Say it out loud. I was like, the first time everyone said it, I was just standing there. I was like, <laughs> all right, looking at everybody say it. And I was like, all right, let me let me say it this time. And then when I said it, I was like, whoa, like, whoa. I said it and I got choked up. Mm. I'm like, whoa. Like, I've never thought to make that statement about mm. myself. Um, but now that I know the importance of words, the energies that the energy that it carries, like I intentionally will not say something negative about myself out mm. loud. Whether I think it, I'm feeling it, I'll, I will not say it out loud to myself for my ears to hear. So I feel, yeah, I came over my, I came over that I have better self-esteem now. Mm. Um, of course, I don't know, maybe it started when I started making music. Mm. I think that's when it, when it really happened because I was like, wow, I got, like, I don't, I don't have what that person has as far as money, but I got this gift that you cannot recreate. Sure. Um, you can't do it necessarily the way I do it, no matter what, that is my gift, and you can't take it. I think that's when I, I started to really grow. Or, or, you know, okay, so I think that's really deep. So you would say, because, I mean, you, you're you're a hell of a musician. Thank but you. You're such you. a broad person. I, would, I can't just say music is your purpose. <laughs> I say your voice is your purpose. Let's say that. Mm. Right? I can see that. So, you know, a, a consistent theme you'll see with people because, you know, I battle with low self-esteem for a long time too, especially with men. This, and I'm happy we brought it up because it's something we just don't speak about. Mm. Um, a consistent theme you see is if you don't know your purpose as a man or your direction, it's very easy to fall into having, no matter what you, even the guys who have all the nice stuff, they have that stuff because they have low self-esteem. So they mm-hmm. got to kind of mask that with all this material stuff because they really ain't crazy about themselves. But a man with purpose in his direction, no matter what he has on, he loves himself. Yep. So would you say once you figured out your gift and you found your purpose, it kind of changed everything? I would say that it definitely changed everything because it didn't really matter how someone else saw me. I knew what I was mm. at that point. So I've always said to like, I've said it to my oldest son too. Like, I don't care if somebody doesn't like me because of me. I don't care at all. But if you don't like me because you don't know me, I don't care either. I, just, like, <laughs> I don't care. If you don't like me because of me, then I, I know at least in my heart that I always mean well, no matter right. what it is I'm doing. I took my time. If, if I had to sever a connection that I had maybe with a friend, it was not easy for me. I took my time with it. I made sure I did it in the most delicate way I could because it was just what we both needed. Maybe we don't see it, you know. But right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's so interesting. You were talking about negative self-talk. And uh, I read this book one time, and he spoke about the, the human brain. He said we shouldn't even joke about certain things to ourselves because the brain doesn't register jokes. Nope. Anything you say to your brain, it takes serious. So if you say, I hate myself, it registers that. So much so that he gave a um, one of his antidotes for people going through low self-esteem or depression or anything. He said, go in the mirror in the morning and smile. Because just mm. the brain seeing a smile, it starts to register that dopamine. It automatically makes you happy. So we can actually manufacture happiness. Yep. And so even 50 Cent said one time, he said, um, I think you can will yourself into a good space. Meaning, you know, people talk about mindset. But if your mind is set on you not being capable of doing anything, then you'll find every reason not to get things done in life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that person can find a problem in every situation. Or, in so every situation. what I notice about you is you're a very solution-oriented person. Where did that? Now, most people from poverty don't think like that. Where mm. did that come from? From poverty? <laughs> it came from that because I didn't want it. I didn't want it no more. And then I had, I had my son young, you know, uh, when I was 15 is when my ex was pregnant with my oldest son. So... I was like, just looking around, like, damn, all my friends are gangbangers. Like, I know what I'm into. I know what they're into. Like, 
I don't want to see him here. I need to do something different. Mm. What? I don't know. I need to figure something out. So I would get pulled into like those MLMs. I got pulled into all that stuff because I that that promise of being your own boss, setting your own schedule, mm. all of those things is what got me. And now being an entrepreneur, the main thing that has me with that is the same thing, setting my own schedule. The the thing that I cannot give up, and maybe it sounds small, maybe it sounds small to a lot of people, but my kids know dad wakes up and dad takes me to school. My kids know dad get gets over there and he picks me up from school. Mm. It's like the teachers know me and like that's weird for them to know the father as well. Mm. You know, it's typically it's always the mom and Geneva will get them too, but I enjoy doing it. Wow. I didn't have that. I walked home since I can remember. Like, wow. you know, I had wow. Wow. Um, award ceremonies missed since I can remember, but I get it. That was that was just our generation. That's wow. what happened. You wow. know, we were taught that we hey, you have to work as a man. You have to have all these jobs. There's no other way. There's no other solution. But now that is my why for everything mm. I do is like, will this give me more freedom with my children to decide that what I get to do with them when I get to do it? Then that's what I want to do. So I don't like dwelling on uh, negative situations without trying to come up with a solution. I'll maybe let it affect me for a couple hours or a day. The next time it comes to my mind, I need to figure out how to solve it already. Right. I can't sit there. Uh, what I tell my friends is like when I go through something life-changing or something that's negative, I run to it to let it destroy me so I can pick myself right. up quicker. Because right. if you, it's just my theory, right? No, that's, let's that's just real. say. That's real. If I ran into it, I let it destroy me immediately. My bricks, my wall that I built, it falls, but I can find all my bricks because they're all still right here. Now, if I continue over time, I let it chip away at me, and now I want to rebuild myself. Where are all my bricks? Where mm. do they fall? Oh, there's some back there. There's wow. some over there. I'm, I lost a lot of myself along the way. Now I don't know who I am. I'm trying to build myself back wow. up. I'd rather go through it, let it destroy me, and rebuild immediately. It's so deep that you say that, bro, because we, we sp trials are sent for us to face them. So, you know, I, I lived in uh, Anchorage, Alaska as a kid, and if an avalanche was coming, you know, the fastest way to save the town from an avalanche is to cause it yourself, mm. not to wait for it. Because if you wait for it, you can kill a million people because yeah. you don't know what, you know, if you cause it, you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. So that same theory goes towards trials in life. Instead of running from it, turn around and face it so you know what's coming. Yep. You know what I mean? But now, bro, you're one of the heavy hitters. I don't know if you know this in the credit industry. You're one of the heavy hitters. Am I? Yeah. I Everybody talks about Duke the Credit Beast. They <laughs> I call don't know him about that. Duke the Credit Beast. Man, you got so many good nicknames, bro. The free car guy. Yeah. How did you get into what made you want to learn about it? Mm. And what made you learn about it? What got me interested in it was always having bad credit. You know, like, uh, I guess you could say the thing that really that flipped in my mind and made me realize like I need to change this was because uh, I had a dog. It was like my, my first dog that I got myself after moving out on our own. Uh, his name was Luda. And I got home from work one day and he's just sad. Like he won't get up. And I'm like, come on, I have his treats and he won't get up. And then um, he's whimpering. So I go to pick him up and he starts yelping. I'm like, what the heck's going on with him? Like, I was like, all right, like, you know, something's wrong. I tried to take him to the vet. And this is when I was working paycheck to paycheck too. So I just got our own, our own place. And we go, and they're like, oh, well, it's going to be $700 for us to see him. I'm like, man, I don't have $700. Or you can apply for this, uh, I was like, a care credit care card credit or something card. like that that I could use so that they could see my dog. And I was like, because if there's something wrong, then it's going to cost even more if we got to keep him. I'm like, nah, I can't. I was like, damn, I got tried, and I got denied. I was like, damn, I I'm just going to take him in the morning. I'm going to figure something out. I'm going to go somewhere else. And uh, he passed by the time I woke up. Damn. So I was like, bro, I lost, I, and I was, you know, I, I was crying when I picked him up, and I was just like, he's dead because I couldn't get approved for credit. Like, I don't even understand credit. Mm. And then um, I feel like in everything you do, you have to find a mentor. And so far in, cre in the credit industry, I found a mentor. I went through him 500. Wow. I went to, I was part of his first mentorship group. Um, and then from there, it just took, I was okay. I started understanding credit, how to manipulate it. But the thing that always stood out to me was like, why can I manipulate it? If mm. this is some system that that's supposed to, like, I don't have this power, how come I can freeze it at any given moment? I can call them on the phone and get things removed within 24 hours before mm. I knew the law. But I was always like, why can I do that if they're the ones with the power? It seems like I have the power. All I got to say is that, I'm not, never mind, this ain't, no, this ain't credit advice, this ain't legal advice, but I'm just saying back then, it was more like all I gotta say is it's not mine and it's gone. Right. You know right. what I mean? That right. that was back then before right. all the all the template sellers came out. Right. I feel like template sellers should be a very negative. You shouldn't want to be called a template seller. Right. I know I'm getting off topic, but yeah. you should not want to be called a template seller. So all you template sellers out there, 
you should not be one <laughs> and you're doing a, the people a major disservice but um so from there uh he had posted a video uh, of you and you were talking about the consumer law and before i heard only one person that told me before like you know everything's paid for already i was like well how how is that and they just said oh you know that whole spiel that everyone else gives but i was like but where can i find that Ah, uh, just something you kind of have to know. I was like, all right, whatever. But I was always intrigued. I remember telling Geneva, like, yeah, this guy is saying this. Can you believe? She's like, I don't know, but how would you find it? I was like, I don't know, but I need to find it. And then a couple months later, there you are on that video. And um, that intrigued me so much. I was just like, no, there's no way. Like, this is the law. If this is the law, then why don't we do this? Why do we abide by all these other laws that we never fact-checked, but these laws that he's showing me? people aren't using it doesn't make sense to me so i bought those books the diy operations and bankrupt the bureaus and people complain about the price and you dropped it to free now <laughs> that, they don't even understand like i literally dropped it was close to a thousand dollars at the time for those right. two books right. and um you know when they arrive i told the story before but when they arrived you know they're they're big but they're, they were thin right. so my <laughs> and my boys happened to be there that time and when they got there when they got, I was like, oh, my books, bro, the book. Like, I was all telling them about it. I was like, here they are, boom. I ripped it open. They looked at it like, bro, like that, that's a thin book. You pay how much? It started cracking up. <laughs> I was like, bro, I was like, I'm, well, that's cool because I'm going to find a million dollars worth of game in these books. Trust me. Boy. And then from there, man, I was just like lost in it. I got lost. I was consumed by it. Then you had the L.A. event, and that's when I went to that. And I feel like um, by the questions I was a asking is what made me stand out a bit because everyone started coming to me to the end like if i had answers i'm like bro i don't have no answers i'm asking questions over here but um that's what really made me get involved in credit and then realizing what credit really is is what made me continue to push so so what is it for those that don't know like you said credit is life credit is our power and that's why we can change anything at any given moment that's why they have commercials to advertise to us if you if I needed you, shouldn't it be me selling myself to you instead of you selling yourself to me, sending me mail with a free, a free pre-approved offer? Credit is the only thing that truly matters. Mm. They, these corporations can't do nothing without it. They can't do nothing without us. Why? Why? So I remember like uh, this guy Derek Grace at the time I fought. He would always say that like they, we they need us. We don't need them. They need us. Why? And I, I liked that. I was like, yeah, you know what? But for learning consumer laws, like that's why it's true. So now you hit the ground running, though, Jesse. You didn't play. You went straight for the gusto. <laughs> yeah. Why? Uh, I would say just because I wanted to test myself. Mm. And Geneva says anything I try to do, I always end up very good at it when I put my mind to I it. I agree. So um, I was like, okay. So I, I already had been studying. Like, I'm talking about reading the book over and over and then taking notes on it the final time I read it. And then reading the Banker of the Bureaus over and over and then taking notes on it as I read it again. Mm. So it was like stuck almost immediately within the first two months. I could cite codes. I, I could already like say which one it was. Or, and that was something I at the time I thought like, well, I guess it is important for me now that, that I teach, you know. But at the time I was just like, yeah, I need to be able to go in there and say 15 USC, blah, 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 blah. And then just say it to these people. And that's not really the case, you know. But I was like, okay. Well, this is going to be the test. I, at first, I wanted to get a Cadillac because I love the CTS. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to get first. They didn't have it at the dealership. And I was like, ah, I was all right. And it was a, a nice Audi, like an i7, all white, super clean. Um, only like the drug dealers in my neighborhood had those. So wow. I was like, ooh. Wow. I was like, nah, never mind. I'm going to finance that. And then I walked in on the showroom floor, and that's when they had the, the Jeep fully loaded, all white, too. I never even been into Jeeps, but I just seen it. And I was like, nah, I'm going to finance that. And that's literally what I said to them. I, I'm going to finance that. And they're all just like, look, like, what? You're going to finance it? You, don't, you haven't looked at the ticket price. I'm like, I'm going to finance it. Mm. Well, they, you said there's a finance charge, right? Like, yeah, I was like, I'm good. I'm going to finance it. Then. They were just like, you know, throwing, throwing off. And before that, I wrote a script and in my phone of what, what rebuttals to say. And that should not go that way. They, I hadn't. I didn't even. I looked at it. And I was like, "This is useless. Like nothing they're saying to me is what I I thought they would say." Mm. So it was really just thinking on my feet, and um, that studying is what helped. Is and then when I got denied, reversed the approval just by citing law to somebody on the phone. I was just like, "This is it. Mm. You know, th this is it. Like this is crazy. Like this works." 
if you know how to work it. The system always works if you know how to work it. But yeah, that's that's what I got started when I didn't think it was as big of a deal as it was. Mm. So after I I told the group, I'm like, yeah, bro, I just pulled this out. I was excited because I did it. But I didn't think it would turn into what it turned into because I didn't think it was as big of a deal as it was. Mm, mm. You had another situation too. You know, they call you the free car guy. How did that come about? Uh, just from, <laughs> I had an interview. From the interview, they were saying it's a free car. So they were, they were thinking like, oh, you got it completely free. I was like, yes, I didn't put nothing down and I never paid on it. Word. And I'm fighting them for the title. Word. So the, the work is not done. I Word. have to work until it's done. Then I can rest. Word. But right now, it's still an ongoing process. But yes, I've never paid a dollar on it. I don't intend to either. Why? Because it's already paid for. I'm not going to pay for it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Let's give them some jewels, Jesse. Okay. Right now, there's a guy in your old neighborhood going through what you went through, and he sees no way out as far as credit is concerned. What are you saying to him? Mm. His dog's about to die. <laughs> His dog's about to die. I mean, I would tell him, that he definitely well it depends if his credit can be built, you know, because I, I know it's, it's so hard to talk about it now that way because I know the score doesn't matter. Well, but if we, you can we manipulate still, yeah, it, we still got to play the game. Yeah, if you can manipulate it, it's one. I would always tell people it's, it's one less fight. Well, it's one less fight to have if you have the good, if you have what they call good credit, because we know there's no good or bad credit, it's just credit. But if you had no credit, I'll put him on some. Can I even say that, man, on here? I put him on some trade lines. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, hell yeah. If I tell him, all right, bro, do you rent? He'd be like, no, I stay with my mom. Okay, cool. You rent from your mom, bro. We're going to go to rentreporters.com and I'm going to get Word. I'm gonna get yours game. backdated, you know, Word. a couple years. Boom, we're going to hit that. We're going to get you into like Navy Fed and then we're going to hit Navy Fed when you have a 600. We'll get you that card. Boom. But if it's an emergency, then I probably, all right, bro, I'm going to go with you. We're going to apply. And when you get denied, like, I'm going to hit the ground running. Word. Like, I'm going to start blowing up the phones i'm gonna start sending stuff over if i get a fax number they're getting fax left and right on like i'll set a timer every 30 minutes i'm sending a fax till we get a call back okay cool boom 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 mm. so then fight them with the laws and use truth and lending act the truth the truth and lending act Mark. you know like and it's so deep you see what you said at the beginning of that statement it's like the biggest issue with the consumer law community and all the people who talk about a lot of credit and everything is they have this warped perception, like yeah, I'm a, I, like they want to, they want to beat the system and go play off the grid. That makes no sense to me. This is a monopoly. Mm -hmm. Why not play the game? Like take the credit, get assets, and feed your family forever. It's that simple. Like take your credit, play the game. Okay, all right, fine. Some people want to deal with credit scores. Well, there's ways around. That's gonna take forever. But me, I'm gonna play the game. Okay, they want to see this. I can cite this law to get myself to an 800 credit score and then do whatever I want to do from there, fuck it up, and then redo it all over again. I've, bro, I've lived all over the world in many countries. I've yeah. never seen a country like the United States of America where you can come here with absolutely nothing to your name, nothing but a social, no, nothing but a social and become and a millionaire, <laughs> right? And go into a neighbor, if somebody can get you in the Navy Federal the same day, you can go right in there and get everything you need, come right out. And put yourself together. And you have people who are crazy enough to say, yeah, I don't want to do that. I do. I'm yeah. going to play the game. I say, oh, that, that's a lot of work. A lot of work to get $20,000. That's that's somebody's like yearly that, salary. What are you talking about instantly? Mm -hmm. Navy Federal in the middle of the night, twenty grand. i am talking about when I first saw that, I had to sit back. I had to really check myself because I've never been a flashy person. So I sat back like I really thought about this. And this is a week after a woman offered. My, my little brother can corroborate this story. A woman sent me a $20,000 check so she can invest in a company I had. And I hung it up on the wall and voided it out. I wasn't going to use it. Mm. Right? And I, I needed the money. Yeah. But I'm saying I have to say that same night I got approved for like, it was maybe, uh, it's the, I still have the card actually. Navy Federal, right? Yep. It's over twenty grand, But when it when it approved that fast, I was just sitting there like, that's the game. I, like, I, was, I was complicating everything. Like, I got, no, just play the game. It's that simple. It, it is that simple. That's the thing too is that, when people like they hear the law, they see what it is. They okay, well, what about this? Like, well, that has no, nothing to do with no, it, bro. You're, you're overthinking the situation. Keep it simple. And then when they think, oh well, well, I have no income. Shouldn't I always say I have no income? Well, this is a debt-based society, <laughs> and income is make believe that I'm a millionaire when I need to be, <laughs> and I'm poor as hell when I need to be. <laughs> I'm whatever I need to be when I need to be it. That's that's the and beauty that's, of America. At any moment, at any time, in any bank, you can be whoever or whatever you want to be to get what you want. That's the that's United States of America. That's Donald Trump. That's the <laughs> Rockefellers. Like, I think that people from our community just don't play the game enough. Mm -hmm. Well, because we're, we're taught that it's not for us. And, and now we're and, changing that. And we that's the game. main thing. So I think very, very soon it's going to be uh, almost common knowledge. Word. 
I see. At least for the, the generation after us, it's going to be common knowledge. Right. For my kids, the way they think and the way they talk. It's just I I know it. I haven't even I haven't even intentionally taught them. Mm. They've just heard me on consultations or on phone calls. Like they just heard me talk, mm. and then they're able to like catch it. So like they always catch they always catch more, uh, hear more, and see more than we think. So experience change you in Equifax. What should people do about this? Man, they should just be attacking them. They should be disputing anything that they see. They should study what adverse action is. Study the FCRA. Look at what happens in the news. They're already giving you everything. More. If it happened and it's a class, the way I could say, if it's a class action lawsuit, that means they did it to a million people. More than likely, they did it to you. More. Now, you can join the class action lawsuit or come up with your own based on what you see there. Just switch it to your own life. And, man, you can you could change your whole life. Even if it was small checks, people think, oh, I need to, because they owe me from violations, they owe me 50000 I need to get the 50000 or I lost. More. What if you got two thousand? What if you got fifteen hundred sure. from sending pieces of paper? You sent you mailed off seven was it seven bucks? It cost me like seven bucks to send it with tracking and a green return sure. receipt. And then a CFPB complaint, attorney general complaint. It just takes a little bit of time. And if you did that repetitively, now it's, that's a full time job at some point. Like you repla- sure. you can replace income, supplement income. Hell yeah. I think that uh some people say, like, you know, you'll see people say, Well, eight hundred credit score, I can get whatever I want. With a 400 credit score, you can probably get more sometimes. What I mean by that is, <laughs> yeah. you know, bad credit equals good money. So what I tell people is, you know, you can hit them. You don't have to go federal. You can hit them small claims with no laws. You can hit them, get a check. Now, what if we had, what if me and 10 of my friends do that at one time? And we each get, let's say, two grand, which is the average people are getting, right? Mm. Now we got 20 grand. Mm-hmm. And now we have the scores to go, to go with that. And now we all go out of Navy Federal. Now we all get 20 grand to get a credit card. Yep. Now we got 40 grand. No, we got more than that. So 10 people get 20 grand. That's 200,000. You up. And all you really need is one person in that group of friends with a vision and the rest. Just one, bro. And the rest willing to follow. And that's the thing, though, is our pride gets in the way. There's a lot of, there's a lot of times that we all could have ate. And just in my experiences outside of there's a lot of times that me and a lot of other people could have ate. But one person's greed or pride was like, nah, because like, it ain't my idea, bro. I can't ride with right. it. So that we need to get rid of that. And something I was telling my, my brother Israel, which is like my spiritual teacher, I was telling him actually today because I seen him earlier after my haircut. I was like, well, they do everything intentionally. And I've said it on my podcast, too. It's like they do everything intentionally. They intentionally separate us by religion. Right. They separate us by race. They separate us by um you know, se- uh, with sexual orientation, they separate us by everything. Mm. We are always separated. But when you look at the law and it says what a natural person is, that's each and every oh, single Lord, one of us. Lord. So we are all exactly the same. We are all exactly the same. That means we only have one true enemy. With well, the second that everyone realizes that, it's game over. Lord, Lord. And that's like, that's when it's going to be crazy or mm. whatever when i hope i i'm around to see when that happens well you you didn't spearheaded it bro nah so was, nah. even when you ain't here you're gonna be here you know put your son uh, come on the way people talk about you the, the things you've done so far mm. and in my eyes you're just getting started so it's like you know that's how i feel i'm just getting started um i feel like they're talking about like i made a masterpiece and i'm still sketching i don't get it it feels, <laughs> weird. It feels <laughs> weird to me but it, you know that's if that's what the people like then hey as long as i'm able to help somebody one person that spark if it spark gets a spark in them and they help somebody else, man, I, I feel blessed to be able to do that. All right, so you spoke about people um, having egos. Mm-hmm. You prove you're not that kind of person because even as big as you were getting, you still joined a team. Why? Because every leader needs to know when it's time to follow, mm. and they need to know when to play the role that they're meant to play. Um, and I it it, w- it wasn't difficult for me to make that decision because uh. It was almost like there ain't no way that they really wanted that you guys really wanted me to join. I just felt like, you know, I, I remember that day too was like the worst day ever. I flew to North Carolina. That was for Osmond's mentorship, and I flew. I for whatever reason I was like I'm gonna fly there the same day and go to class. Like I thought I could do it. I was dying, bro. I was right there like man, I'm shouldn't have done this. I almost overslept, missed the class. I walk in, I remember sitting down like that. And I don't know why Verne and, and Osma are all, like, giddy, full of energy. I'm like, damn, man. Like, and they just keep staring at me, like, tell them. I'm like, what's going on? And then she's like, oh, you know, first it started off if I wanted to teach at, at, at Do For Self. Wow. And I was like, what? Like, you want me? And I was like, well, yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, if, uh, I just got to figure out, you know, 
how I'm going to get there. I just need to figure out if I can get the money together to get my flight. I remember Renee's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, if you're working there, like, we're going to fly you. You're going to fly me? I was like, no way. <laughs> I was like, oh, then I'm for sure there. Like, I'm there. You know, I'll just figure out my room. And she's like, so you're going to get paid if you're t-. I was like, I'm going to get paid, too. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, all right. And I was like, man, I, that was like the best day after that. And I walked out. And I called Geneva, and that's when I got emotional. Like, bro, like, wow, like, you know, I'm really being seen out here. Like, after, like, the worst day ever, sure. like, you get some amazing news. Like, wow, I'm getting I'm getting seen out here. This doesn't even make sense. And then um, I think what I really, truly felt was that when the offer got extended, I felt like it was truly my obligation to try to give back to you what you gave to me because you freed me when you didn't know it or you didn't know I needed it. And then I was, all right, I feel like maybe he might need me now. Let me let me return the favor. Let me join this team mm. and be a follower until maybe it's time for me to be a leader again. Wow. I don't know. You wow. know, you never know where the road's going to take you, but I'm playing the role I need to play when I need to play it. Wow. Uh, something else you said that was really deep. You said, um, I don't know, people know you were atheist at one point. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what happened in your life that made you want to go that route? That want to go atheist? Yeah. Were, uh, were, like, were you a kid when you said, I don't believe in God, or when did it happen? I want to what say I, I was an adult at that point, and you know, uh, seeing people that were going to church and were church goers. So you know, on the outside looking in, they're they're really good people, obviously, right? But then when you see them behind closed doors, like you're an evil person. Mm. But you look down on me just because I don't go there, just because I don't go to church. I'm the bad person, but I'll give somebody my last, but you wouldn't, you mm. know. So I think it was it was more my experience with people, not necessarily my experience with religion. But I still believe that religion is meant to separate us in some way. So mm. I do have a connection with God, but and I would say I'm Christian, but I don't go to church. Mm. I do go to church because we have Bible study. That's my church, but I don't go. I don't need to go into a physical building to be there. Mm. So was what now I what, what turned you into believing in God again? <laughs> the law. Yeah, you know, uh, as crazy heavy. as it is, it's heavy. How? Because I would just read stuff and then realize, like, bro, this kind of lines up with the Bible. Like, why? Why would they Why would they base the law on something that's mythology, that they try to make it seem like it's mythology, right? Or, they throw it out like, oh, it's nothing. It's all make-believe. Look, at there's, there's talking animals in here and stuff. But you're basing the law off of that word. Mm. Why? And I just kept digging, like, all right. And I always had that, like, that's kind of weird. Like, why does it line up? Why can't I go and... And I'm the I'm the lender, not the borrower. And God said that I would never be a lender. I, w- I would lend to many. I mean, I would lend to many, but never right. be a borrower. Right. I was like, huh? I was like, okay. And then you pointed out the one too. But by that time, I already had believed. But you pointed out like every seven years right. things fall off. And in the Bible too, in Deuteronomy, it says right. that every seven years you're supposed to be forgiven. And that's when I was just like, bro, that there's something to this. And then it was my brother Israel. I was on a on a Zoom, because people wanted me to just show up in their classes just because of what I did, just so I could tell people what mm. I did. So I was another one of those, a random invitation. I wasn't even going to do it. And I was like, ah, you know what, I, I guess I got some time. I jumped on. I said my story. And then he said his, and his intrigued me as well. Um, I talked to him previously, so I know that he's okay with me telling the story. But he got a house completely free and clear with the Bible in his hand and just citing, citing scripture. Mm. The cops came, and when he started citing scripture, they backed down, and he got the deed to that house. Mm. So that's when when he was saying that, and I was saying the law, I was like, there has to be a reason. And I didn't expect nothing else. I was just, oh, that, that guy was dope. He ended up reaching out to me. And then from there, he was the one that really helped me see God's hand in everything. Or, or. And, and I, when I met him, today, I told him, too, like, you saved my life, bro. Like, you don't, you don't think you did, but you did. Um and today was my first time seeing him in, in the physical, mm. but I already knew him. Why? Why? And it was like, Geneva asked me, oh, was it weird? I was like, it was like seeing your favorite cousin again, mm. you know? You know, when you had a family party, and it's just you, you're like, damn, man, that's, that's all right. Why? And then that Why? cousin shows up, and you're like, oh, all right, what's Why? up? Like, <laughs> pick up right where you left. That's how it felt. Why? Because I, like, I already knew him. Why? So you don't just, uh, I hate that people think you just do credit. You're like a... You're a real entrepreneur, bro. You got your hand in a lot of things. One one of the things I really like, you have a watch collection. Yeah. How in the world did you get into that? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, the, way, the way it started was growing up, I always liked the Nixons. There's this one, the specific one, it's the 5130 Chrono. It's just a big face watch. And they have a gold one. They have a uh, like a jet black one. 
And I never even looked into the price of it because growing up where I did, I just thought that was unattainable for me. So it was mm. just like and when I was finally an adult at the point that I could afford it, I was like, well, I don't know what came over me. I was like, what if you just wore your own watch? And then that's kind of the idea kind of came in. I was like, okay, well, what if I did? Well, what would I even call it? And I just I struggled for a name, and I was like, well, like, what do I really like? I like I like mob stuff. I like the old school mob movies. So I called it Modern Dawn Wear because it's the modern dawn with the modern dawn wear a boss. Mm. So the phrase I came up with was bring out the dawn in you because everybody's a boss. Mm. Everybody was meant to be a boss at something. You're not supposed to be the boss of everything, you know, but or. because you were meant to be a boss, that's when you have the people who don't, ha- don't know how to follow and then their pride gets in the way and they can't do it. Like, I feel like every... Every boss needs to be a good worker. Like something I seen Rick Ross say, and it stuck with me the most, was he says, I'm a boss. There is nothing, there is no job that is above or below me. Word. And when he says, like, wow, like that was deep for me. Cause I was like, yeah, like when I'll, I'm the one, I designed it, came up with the logo, then I put it together. I'm the, I'll put it together to ship it out. Like, because there's no job that is below me or Word. above me. If Word. you're truly a boss, you should be able to do something from the bottom all the way to the top. You should be able to mop the floor. And step in the office and make boss calls and make word, connections. Word, word. So, where can we find the watches? <laughs> you can find them at moderndawnwear.com. I have the website. We have the Instagram, at moderndawnwear. Uh, you can see it in our our music video that we did. You, know, <laughs> you can see the watches on there as well. Uh, and that was a crazy day, man. We just, he said, we're going to go to the studio. I was like, all right, we're going to go to the studio. I just kept thinking, like, yeah. I kept asking Renee, are you serious? And she'll laugh and say yes. I was like, bro, are we going or not? I don't know what's going on. I, don't, right. I didn't know what the plan was, but that was a dope day. Um, we, went, well, we made like six yeah. six songs or something like that. People don't know, bro. You're like a, you a real writer, bro. Like you yeah. can really like, I don't, ever, I don't even like to say you just rap. Like that was actually kind of amazing. You were in the studio and my stuff, I, I had, remember I had the beats ready. So I wrote before I came. <laughs> yeah. And I was, you know, like I, I was kind of playing around. I heard you rap. I was like, and you were writing that shit right there. You didn't know what beat you were going to use, nothing. Nah. How did you get into music? And did you always have that skill like that? Nah. I think I was nice even when I started, but Geneva says I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> you look at it, it's like, yeah, you know what? I wasn't really writing on the beat correctly, but I felt like my rhymes were always good. And the way it started was I just wanted to do it. And I remember telling one of my friends, who used to be my friend back in the neighborhood, but that's what I wanted to do. And he said, I couldn't. Mm. He said, oh, you can't do that, bro. So it started off just to prove to him that I could write a rap. Mm. And then from there, it started like my, um, my uncles, a lot of my uncles on my mom's side of the family, they are all uh, they were all musicians. Uh, one of my uncles was in a band that was actually signed and they would tour and everything. But they're more into like guitars and stuff like that, not rapping. It was more rock. So they had the equipment. And I finally I told my uncle I wanted to try to record something. And that's That was it after that. Wow. But before that, I had bought at a swap meet, an uh, old school tape recorder that had a little mic on it. And I recorded like my first track without go around school and playing it. <laughs> and then uh, I have some old videos up of me. I'm all scrawny. I'm like, I don't know, 120 pounds at the time. I'm rapping right there. And uh, yeah, it's funny is that that video got my cousin in, in big trouble because he's in the background, you know, with the little joint in the background trying to dance around. And his sister saw it and sent it to his mom, and that was game over for him at that time. All right. So now, what other businesses are you into, bro? Uh, I know I missed a few. <laughs> just consumer law, man. The watches, just being an entrepreneur in general. Uh, what I got into for a while too was dividend stocks. So that would probably be like my game plan for building assets is getting dividend stocks because they pay you, put them on, set them to drip. What drip means that any time that you're supposed to get your dividend check, instead you have it buy that same amount of the stock. So if you continue to put money into that, it's better than a savings because you're buying more. So the amount that's getting dripped becomes more and eventually can become an income. And that's something you can pass down to your kids. Mm. So my kids won't have to work, but I don't need them to know that. I, mm. need, I don't need them to know they don't have to work to be able to make it because of what I did. They need to believe that they need to work. Mm. But, so what's your, what's your idea of success for yourself? For myself, I'd say right now, I'm already very impressive to my younger self. Mm. To my younger self, man, he would not believe it if he could if he could take a glimpse in a couple of years into the future 
you would not believe the things I have. And I wouldn't say, I would say, oh my God, I'm living this lavish life. Nah, but just, bro, talk heavy. just the, <laughs> please, just the family that I have, the love that I have in my home, the the home that I have, the the things I'm able to do, the people I'm able to help from of coming from a point of helplessness to helping so many mm. is crazy. But to me, my success would be when it is like, hey, you know what? Today, I want to do this. Are you down? Yeah, okay. All we got to do is find the flight, and my kids are out. We're gone. Wow. We go and do whatever we need to do whenever we want to do it. Um, but I'm already living a lot of that success because, I'm, like I said, I get to pick my kids up from school every day. I get to uh, take them to school. I don't miss events. I don't miss their games. I don't miss their practices. I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely present. Mm. So that's like a, a major level of success for myself so let me ask you this too i ask everybody this when they come on the podcast who are your top five heroes my top five people heroes who, who influence you know because you know i think everybody has people who influence them whether you are whether you're a history buff or i mean it could, I mean, it could have been eminem in some ways mm. but who are your top five heroes man that's a hard one i would say man because now it's hard to say that because when it comes to celebrities which would have been my heroes back in the day but now knowing what I know about that industry, none of them are really my heroes. Mm. None of them, I don't think that they really are for the people behind closed doors as they are in front of cameras. Mm. Or they may be evil on behind closed doors. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. I feel like a lot of them are missing their soul. But So with that being said, I, there's a, a old list I would have probably said like The Rock back in the day. Just because he was just so cool. Like, man, they like look at him. He's so cool. He's so wow. like strong. The things wow. he does. Like... The, the things he thinks of, the way he speaks. Um, but I guess now, if I had to choose, what would I say? I'd probably say definitely like my grandma. She's like a strong woman, always helps no matter what. And I think that's where I got that from. Uh, who else? Who Hi, else? Grandma. Yes, yeah, so I got my grandma. Definitely always helping people no matter what. Like, mm, So that's where you get that from. I guess so, yeah. That's where I'll get like I'll give my last, whether it's energy or it's food, it doesn't or dollars, money, it doesn't matter what. I'll give my last if you needed me to. Or, um, hmm, yeah, my grandma for sure. All right, I like that. Yeah, I say definitely you are one of them. Nah, bro. <laughs> nah. <laughs> if I'm being real, definitely you are one of them. All right. Because like, well, look at where I'm at now. That wouldn't have happened had I not seen your videos. Mm. Mm. So that saved me. You literally saved me. Therefore, you are a hero. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> like, likewise, literally bro, saved likewise, me. Likewise. Yeah. Um, my brother Israel, All definitely. Right. Three. Ah oh, man, because I'm choosing real people, so it's like. Or, not, not, I mean, celebrities are real people too, but these are people I know. Or, uh, definitely, Ozma, man. She's a small giant. Or, and the, <laughs> another one that has saved me and opened up my eyes to a lot. Um, mm. That's four. Man. I'd have to say Geneva. She has Geneva? to make the list. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That is probably one of the best answers we got. For those that don't know, Geneva is Jesse's wife. Yeah. He's never sleeping on the couch, ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> but I have to say her, man, because she's powerful, too. She, mm. don't, she don't see that power yet, but I do. And so I how think. important is that to have a spouse that, you know, because it seems like when you tell a story, it seems like she was supportive in anything you wanted to do. Oh, yeah. Um, honestly, with that, that Jeep situation, I wanted to leave. I looked at her, and I was like, let's get the hell out of here. Like, I literally was, like, I, I'm stressed out. Like, I shouldn't have even tried this. Like, let's go. And she's like, nah, babe, you got it. Figure mm. it out. And I was like, all right, let's see. Like, what can I come up with now? Because now it's just thinking out the box. And that's when I decided, all right. I was like, you know what? I got hard inquiries. I'm getting alert. Let me see if I can pull up their phone number. I'm going to start calling them. And that's what led to the approval is that I thought outside the box, I started calling who ran my credit and started asking questions. Mm. But that wouldn't have happened had she not believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Mm. So that's heavy, having brother. a spouse that's that heavy. speaks life into you rather than you ain't this, you ain't that. And I've had that before. I've had that in the past where I was nothing. You know, you're not going to be successful. You're you're terrible at this. You're terrible at, at this. You'll, you'll, you're going to be here forever. So... I didn't let that mold me, but I can see if I heard that every day and I have people around me that I know they hear that every day and their their thought process is nowhere near mine. Mm. If I tell them, like, bro, you can do this, they'll say they can't. 
Mm. I'm like, yeah, you can. This is how you would do it. Boom, boom, boom. Here's the steps. Start with this tomorrow. No, I, I couldn't do it. Maybe you could, but I couldn't. Mm. And it's because of who they have around them. Mm. So Geneva has never doubted me, but I, I did have to deliver in the beginning. You know, yeah. you don't just get faith out of somebody like that and trust <laughs> just nothing. because, Word. just off of words. Like, you know, so it was me delivering on things I would say. So, but now, yeah, like, I'll even be like, I don't know. I don't know what you think because this, this is a big thing. So whatever you decide to do, I know it's going to be the right thing. So Word. go ahead. And then I, I hate that pressure, though, but I love it at the same time. Word. That's so deep you say that, bro, because, you know, there's two sides of it. We have, like, you'll have men who don't keep their word, don't deliver for their woman, but they want her to believe in them. Yeah, and they get upset. Like, she don't believe in me. Well, I mean, I mean, you, the only time you actually keep your word is if you say you're going to the bathroom. But anything else, you know, women need consistency. So we, they'll give them no consistency and they want the woman to believe in them. Mm-hmm. That's, like, insane to me. So it's like, you know, obviously, when, as you were talking and you were saying that, like, you were sitting in the seat and you're, like, ready to leave. And she's like, don't leave. You know, there's two ways that our, our women can motivate us. One is by speaking life into us. And sometimes we even have to be embarrassed to get that motivation. So it's like, I don't want to, you know, I love this woman so much. I don't want to look fearful in front of her. And, you know, there used to be this, um, this is an ancient war strategy where great chiefs and leaders, what they would mm-hmm. do is they take men's wives and put them at the end of the battlefield. So if he tries to retreat as he's running away, he sees his wife. So can you imagine you trying to run back to your creepy little oh, snap? How about, oh, there oh, it is. I, I had to just pick something up. I was just getting my water. Just turn it right back around. But that's the power of the woman. Like, nah, definitely. Women don't, I think that one of the biggest issues with relationships now is our women don't know their power. A lot of that's our fault, but I think it's, it's double-sided. They don't know how much they can speak life into a man, and they don't know how much they can damn near kill him with their words. Oh, you know definitely. I mean? Definitely. And that's why, like, the snake went after Eve. Because mm. he knew. That's the weakness Word. for every man. Word. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's that's your weakness is your woman. At least she should be. Mm. If she's not, then you're not with the right woman. You mm. know what I mean? If you don't care about her opinion or how she views you, why are you even with that person? Word. But yeah, like I didn't tell her like, oh, I'm I'm too nervous to do. That. I was like, man, this this is stupid. They're acting dumb. They're wasting my time. I may I didn't I, even then I didn't admit Word. that I was getting scared at that point. Like, damn, like this is I bit off too much. Mm. But she was just like, nah, you got it. You'll figure it out. And I just looked at it. I was like, if she believes in me, man, I got to at least try one more thing. Now, you're a very hands-on father. How do you balance entrepreneurship and fatherhood? You have how many kids? I got six. Six kids. Six so how do you kids. Ba- how do you balance it? That's tough to balance it with one. It definitely is. It definitely is. But because I'm a homebody, too, like, other than work, I don't or be with my kids. I don't do anything else. Mm. I'm not interested in being in the clubs or, or anything like that. Even when I rapped. All I did, the only time you see me at a club was because I was performing. After I performed, I left. Mm. So I didn't. I was never into that those type of things. You know, I did that already when I was young and dumb. I don't do it now as an adult. So I just balance it by working around them. They so they see me all the time. That's why they're catching those things without me intentionally showing them mm. because I'm doing it around them. You know, like right now we're doing the podcast. We got our family in the house. More. So the kids could literally, if they were sitting in the living room, they could hear what we're saying right now, and they could catch that. Word. So we're working around them. That's basically what, what it is all Word. day long is working around this guy. I know they got to go at this time, so I'm up. Okay, so I know from this time to this time, they don't got to be picked up yet, so this is my window to just knock something out, and then I'm up late. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm up late, up early. That's pretty much it. So, you know, for me, bro, like, I'm a person that I actually kind of enjoy failing. So when I got into consumer law and I took a bunch of L's in the beginning, mm. that was kind of fun to me. Because mm-hmm. now I'm figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And, and, and what was funny was there were people who did the same thing I did, and it would work for them, it wouldn't work for me. Yeah. So I noticed in my life, I normally have to take the hard-ass path to get what I want, which I don't mind. It's fun. But a lot of people in the beginning, they get, like, discouraged. And then right away, it's like, man, it's a scam. It doesn't work. What in the world made you stick to it when things didn't work right away? Mm, I'd say because I knew that it was something I was doing, not necessarily the law, right, when it came to that or – even with entrepreneurship, if they can do it, I can do it. I just got to figure out how to do it my way. Um, and it's the same thing. Like, I'll grind it out. Like, if I want to eventually leave a job, I am going to leave that job at some point in time. And that is all I think about. Mm. So when I would work in the warehouse, and you see it a lot. And, you know, I'm sure when you work at the airport, everyone's Word. talking about, man, when I get out of here, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But that's all it was, was idle talk at work. Word. So when I would say it, I would go after I'm like, oh, I heard about uh, drop shipping on eBay. Let me look up YouTube videos on how to do it. Okay, cool. On the side after work, I was going and I was I started up my own little drop shipping thing. Mm. And I was like, damn, I'm making like 700 bucks a week and I'm only working like two hours 
uh, like every other day making sure things get out. More. So I was like, whoa, like this, this is doable, you know? So it was just seeing those little glimpses and realizing that those small things were major wins because they wouldn't have happened otherwise. Mm. That's the same thing I tell people with consumer law, like, oh, well, all I did was I, I ended up talking to their attorneys. I'm like, do you think you would have done that if you're a regular customer complaining? More. That's because of what you were saying. That's a win already. You got somewhere. Look at it as a win and keep going. More. But people think the only win is a check. It's not. And it's not because it, there's, there's all these things that come with it that stack up on each other. More. More. I think that, like, you know, um, if you ever look at the old 609 letters? Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is like that's consumer law. Like I be telling people that like they made it seem like we introduced some new thing, and so now even when you look at the, when I look at the credit community, they make it seem like there's a separation. Like yeah, these are credit guys, these are consumer law guys. I be sitting like that's the same exact. They're not doing anything different. It's, it's the, the same, same thing. thing. Yep. So I think that like, you know, they try to group the consumer law stuff with the sovereign stuff to make it spooky, which mm -hmm. is dangerous. That's like a movement you never want to be grouped with, right? So I nah, think so. What I'm getting not. at is like um, people I understand like, you know. You said something earlier. You said we only have one enemy. For me, that enemy has always been poverty mm. because it poisons mindsets. It, you know, people wouldn't even go for things like, you know, religions that separated themselves. If they had the means to take it. Everybody's just searching for to feel something. They want to feel like, yeah. you know, you all we do all day is sit and see what we don't have. Yep. That's all we see all day long. So all you want to do is get something outside of yourself to have something outside of yourself that won't last because the only thing that's going to really last is you getting control of yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm saying all of that to say, like, you know, even in the credit space, another thing that's been used to separate is that you have people who say, well, I teach credit, not consumer law. We're all teaching the same exact thing. We all yep. have the same end goal. Well, they say, oh, I'm left, I'm left wing, I'm right wing. Man, you're part of the same bird, bro. Same bird, bro. Let's <laughs> you're come part together. Of the same bird, yeah. It's all about unity. Like, you know, even at the first Stupid Self Weekend, a lot of people were upset. I lost a lot of friends behind that because they're like, well, you know, you have people on the stage who talk contrary to what you had. Everybody isn't coming here to learn how to do this, that, and other. And, you know, the thing is, like, I learn from everybody, bro. That's why, uh, like, people would see me at events, like, why are you here? Like, yeah. I'm, I learn from everybody. Like, yeah, there, I could watch you and learn something. You know, us just being in the house together, I learn from my son. Like, like I, I, you, I think the most important thing that I learned in my life is never stop being a student in every single moment and situation. Yep. You know what I mean? So, you know, in your life, have you seen that, like, having to like, constantly be a student? I truly believe in always being a student. And every time I say it, they literally think I'm talking about only in consumer law. But it's literally like you said, my son can teach me something. Or, I can learn something from a, somebody older than me and younger than me. And I think that's the thing that holds up the older generation. They don't want to learn from us because we're younger than them. Or, and you're younger than me. Or, and I learn from you. Or, you know, So or, like that, you have to remove that pride again and be willing to be a student. Be willing to say you don't have it all figured out. Or, Everybody wants to have it all figured out. But I'll learn things from my son. Or like when you start seeing things through a things through a child's eyes, it's different, bro. That's when it's really different. That's yeah. when you're like, that's how I'm supposed to view the world. But I let them corrupt me, More. and now I can't view it that way. More. They killed the child in me, More. you know. But More. when you can see again through a child's eyes, like hey, that's when life is beautiful. More. that's true. So Jesse, where can they find you? Right. Uh, tell us something new you got coming. You had an ebook coming. Is that still is that still gonna happen? Yeah. Uh, Tell us where we can find you and then end us with a good word, bro. Okay. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Dukes the Credit Beast. Uh, you can find me every Thursday on the Consumerist Podcast. You can go to consumeristpodcast.com or at Consumerist Podcast on Instagram. You can find me modeling the watches on Modern Dawnwear. You got moderndawnwear.com or the same thing, modern, at Modern Dawnwear on Instagram. Um, I do have a, a physical book I'm going to work on. I got an e-book I'm working on as well. I got the consumer-ish, the 41st chapter. It's an album that I'm working on. Uh -oh. That's all consumer law, and it's going to change the world. I truly believe that. I believe it. It's going to change. It's going to make a whole new genre, but realize where it came from first, and nobody will be able to do it the way I do it. That's the only time I'm going to really talk cocky, but I just no, know have to, bro. nobody have to. will do it because I already rap nice before consumer law. I already rap nice, and now I know Consumer Law, and I'm putting it in there. So it's going to be something different. It's definitely going to be something different. Uh, the something, something to leave you guys with is, hmm, what can I say? Because I want to say something deep. I want to no, end bro, it on something you deep. You always drop bars. Nah, nah. For. I want to end it on something deep, but let's see. What can I say that's going to be deep and really 
change your life, right? That's what I want to do. I want them to hear it and at this least whole, spark your something. Your whole episode changed something. <laughs> I really wanted to spark something in you. So don't let your environment define who you are. Mm. Let it be something that pushes you because you can do better. You can see better. And you can provide better than you currently are right now. You just have to believe in yourself and keep going. It's not easy. No matter what it is you decide to do, it is not going to be easy. But all great things do not come easily. You, they All great things come to those who endure, who mm. endure to the end. Continue to work and don't rest until the work is done. That's all I can say. All right. So I got, whenever we do podcasts, we always try to end it with a good word and a message to our to our. Um our amazing guest. Mm. Um, I think that uh, today Jesse was holding a baby at the uh, baby shower. And they were like, why does this baby love him so much? In my head, I said it in my head like, yeah, because children see people's hearts. You can't fake with a child or an animal. Mm. So that was one thing. And then two, you know, um, I used to be, well, you know, you're probably one of the most humble people well, other than this crazy nigga behind the, the camera. Man, the myth, the legend I would say himself. these are two of the most humble people I ever met in my life. You know what I mean? But there's a quote you know, I be trying not to annoy Chris with all my quotes because he'd be <laughs> with me all the time. But there's a quote of one of my favorite spiritual masters. He says, um, it's bad to pretend to be something you're not. But he said it's even worse to pretend that you're, you're like, if I'm a doctor, I should never pretend I'm not a doctor. Because now if I'm on an airplane and somebody's dying and I pretend I'm not a doctor, I'm hurting everybody on the airplane. <laughs> yeah, you know definitely. what I mean? So he said that's even worse. So I said that to say, like, in our society, to kind of hurt the great men like yourself, mask humility with like a person just hiding who they are mm. humility just means who i am i know it's alone they don't own me so i'm mm. at any moment whatever skill i have like remember in space jam where they took the skill or something and gave it to the uh you know anytime guy can do that yep so i'm saying that to say like you know bro you got a lot to offer that's why i love to hear you talk heavy like you did a minute ago you got <laughs> a lot to offer you've done a lot for the world you've done a lot for a lot of people I don't want you to give up, which I know you won't. Keep pushing. Mm. There's so many sacrifices you make behind the scenes that people don't see. Um, I see you. I'm grateful for you. I'm happy to, that you're my brother in arms. I'm happy that we're doing this together. And I love you all, and I love myself. Love myself. I love myself.